Welcome back, everybody. And as you can see, the snow is a fallen. Um, we've skipped ahead a couple of months, mostly because the last two attempted videos that I tried to record, something went horrifically wrong, and I was dealing with some video corruption, and I tracked it down. It was a hard drive issue. Problem solved. So hopefully this one's going to work. Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> I did a boatload of work in the last two videos, which sucks because now you will not get to see it. Uh, I'll briefly go over it. Uh, we had a couple of contracts that we did. One for uh, some mowing and some baling, and another one for some cultivating, which we completed both and made around... $25,000 doing those two contracts. Um, another thing we did is we sold off all of our silage bales that we had tucked around the corner here, and that netted us almost $50,000. So between those two jobs and selling off our silage, we bought another 23 pigs, so we are up to 50 pigs, and I'm sure they're freezing their little curly tails off over there. Uh, we also picked up a front mower to go with our rear mower so that we could uh, cut grass a lot faster. And uh, what else did we do? Oh, we fertilized our grass field over here so we could get a better yield for next year. And, um, anything else? I think that's about the size of it. So, oh, and we've also got some tomatoes that the greenhouse was producing, and we've pulled them out of the snow and stuck them in this uh, little shed here so that they're out of the element. Um, it is the best month to sell tomatoes, so we're going to sell off these four pallets of tomatoes and hopefully make a couple thousand more dollars off of those. And then we're probably just going to sleep ahead to Ju uh, January because that's when our wheat is at its high price. And then we'll go and sell off our wheat. And uh, then I think it's just skip ahead to, to the next planting season. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump in the tractor here and we will go pick ourselves uh, up some tomatoes here. Oops, built back this way. There we go. And uh, we're going to sell these guys off. So hopefully they don't freeze on the drive. And hopefully they don't fall off. That's what I wanted. Slide down to the pallet forks. Beautiful. So let's find out where we have tomatoes to sell. Oh, you know what? As I'm looking this up, uh, this is our, our high point. So we're going to tag it. Uh, one other thing that we did. We took out a loan for $20,000 and we purchased Field 5. Uh, it cost us about eighty grand, but we had lots and lots and lots of money from the jobs we did and all of our silage bales we sold. So we ended up uh, making that purchase. So we now have Field 5, 6, and 29. This has got uh, barley in it. This one is the one that we have to put some crop in when the time comes, and this one is our grass field, so uh, things are looking good. Another field, good stuff. So let's turn our interface on, and we'll get our time fired back up, and let's go sell these tomatoes. Um, yeah, so like I said, once we get these tomatoes sold off and done, we'll have to... Uh, skip ahead to January so we can sell off our wheat and hopefully the snow is not too out of control it is actually quite heavy in the fields there's no accumulation on the roads here thank goodness but uh, in the fields it's actually really really heavy so we'll just have to hope and pray that 
the snow doesn't continue to fall too much because I'd like to get into that barley field as soon as possible. Um, after we picked it up, I went and looked and the nitrogen levels are bad and the pH is bad. So we're going to need to lime that field. Oh, I've driven past the place where I'm taking this already. Oops, I thought it was the other market. It's right here. Um, but yes, as I was saying, the lime is bad and the fertilizer is bad. So we definitely need to get... Um, get into that field as soon as we can and get it prepared so that we can get a good yield out of it. Oh, this is nice and convenient. This is so much closer than the last market that we went to. We'll get these guys sold off. There they go. Money's going up. Beautiful. Come on, sell it quicker. It's cold out here. <laughs> and last couple here. There we go. So that got us a little over a thousand dollars. So we'll uh, we'll get that again. With the second stack. So let's go get that second pair of tomatoes and bring them on over get them sold off and then we can have a rest I am just losing it here forgetting where I need to go <laughs> oh it's super late I'm super tired I've already tried recording once today and like I said things just did not work so hopefully this one will be the one that that makes it and we can get a video that we can throw together for you all um, and uh, you won't miss out okay so let's just get these forks out here that should be good uh, I want to get these brought together a little bit more Hopefully, we'll scoop these. Beautiful. And I always tilt it the wrong way the first time. <laughs> All right. Two more pallets of tomatoes on the way to the old market. Let's get her done. So, uh, I've actually been thinking about uh, doing some live streaming, as I was telling you all. Um, videos are, are going great, but I think about adding some live streaming back into things. And I think that what we'll do is we'll probably end up starting back on the live streaming this weekend, if all goes well. Um, I have the entire month of October where... I'm going to be flying solo. Uh, Mrs. G is no longer uh, in country. She has gone on her trip. She flew back home. She landed in the Philippines about an hour ago now. Get off the road, woman. So uh, she's going to be there for a month. Which means that I have a month of no other plans. It's just working and making content. <laughs> so I think what we'll do is we'll try on Saturday um, to jump in and do a live stream. And we'll just kind of play it by ear, see how it goes. I have not done any live streaming in quite some time, so let's try and jump back in. Hopefully all goes well, and uh, then we'll just kind of play it by ear. Um, I'm definitely going to keep with making the videos, but uh, I enjoy live streaming so much more than, than doing the videos, so I think what we'll do is we'll see how the live streaming goes, and if things go well and I'm uh, not having any issues with, with the live streaming and 
schedule's working out good, then we will try and focus on getting back up to doing more live streams during the week rather than trying to do a video every day. We'll try and get a couple of live streams in to go with a video or two here or there. We'll get it all sorted out, but I definitely miss the live streaming aspect of uh, hanging out with you all, so we'll definitely try and get that uh, fired back up here. Okay, let's hop out of the old tractor and go have a snooze until January. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll definitely make a post on the community tab about live streaming and when I'm hoping to uh, be able to fire it up. What? Changing electricity costs. Okay. That is something cool in one of the mods. Hmm. Nice. So yes, definitely uh, if you're looking forward to some live streaming, keep your eyes open for the community post and uh, we'll let everybody know as soon as possible what's going on and what time I hope to stream and what we'll be streaming on Saturday. More than likely, it's going to be farm sim, but you never know. You never know. I might go off script and do something completely different. So, the ground is frozen and there is a lot of snow out here. Let's uh, check on the animals. We've got lots of food. They're making lots of slurry. This is good. They have a lot of straw left in there, so we should be okay. Um, how is the manure situation doing? Uh, 2,000 liters of manure and 1,000 of slurry. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so our goal for January is to uh, sell off our wheat because it's at its peak. We're at 740 and it's dropping. It's starting to go down. 735 is the advertised high. So let's get this place tagged. And let's get the green or the wheat loaded into this trailer ASAP and get out on the road. Okay, let's take all the wheat we can muster. Hopefully this trailer will hold 12,000 liters. It does, perfect. So it took everything we had. Let's get over there and get this sold. See how much money we're gonna make. I figure it's gonna be around, if I remember right, it's gonna be around like $6,000, I think. Oh, you know what I should be doing? Does this have a cover on it? No, it doesn't have a tarp. I was going to close the tarp. But it doesn't have one. Okay, let's get this wheat over to the sell point and get it sold. skip and a jump but uh, at least we're here we can get this sold off and see how much we're gonna make can 
I go through all the way. It does go through all the way. Good stuff. Okay. 22095. Let's see where we end up. Almost 10,000. Woo! I was thinking it was going to be closer to uh, six or seven. That is nice. Every little bit of money counts. Because we are definitely, we've got the loan payments that we've got to make. I took out that little bit of loan when we bought that field. Just to make sure we had a little bit of money for wiggle room. You know, don't want to leave ourselves with nothing in the bank. Had we bought the land with no loan. We would have had a little less than five thousand dollars left in the bank and that just it did not seem right to me to leave ourselves so short uh, it's very easy in farm sim to uh, come out on the short end of the stick and lose everything so <laughs> I decided I'd rather take out that little bit of a loan and have ourselves in a good position where we had some money to make our payments and had some money to, to do some things if something came up and it was an emergency and we had to absolutely go out and get something like say pig food for example or something along those lines um, so another thing to discuss really quickly is um, I remember when we talked about purchasing that field that the little pad area the little concrete pad that's kind of in between field five and field six we were thinking about throwing up a little shed there and um, giving ourselves another area to store equipment because we're rapidly running out of room for all of our equipment um, I'm thinking we've got two options I guess we can put a shed up there, or we could look at, um, I don't want to go crazy here, but I'm kind of thinking about doing more animals aside from just eggs. Um, I'm really, really interested in doing some sheep. Because sheep will get you, when we look on the product uh, list here, sheep get you wool. And I don't know if they have it on this particular map, but some of the maps have not only just milk, but they have sheep milk. So I just want to look here really quick. Soy milk, milk. Well, they don't have the sheep milk on here, because I don't think that it's just going to come through as milk and if it does excellent um but what we could do is we could look and see if there's an animal dealer on the map we could check it out and see if the sheep do produce uh sheep milk on this uh on this map because i don't know if it's something that's customizable on certain maps or if it's on all all maps, I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't done sheep before either. So what I want to do really quick is we're going to go into here. And I want to look at construction really quickly. Because this little pad, right? Okay, where is it? Right here. We were looking at this little area right here, putting a shed up park equipment in. Now we don't have a ton of money and I was looking at something that was going to be like just a drive through shed super cheap um, like you know even something like this that just protects our stuff from the elements could be good now I have another thought when it comes to the animals how I'm talking about the sheep I don't know like this pasture I don't know if it's possible to put another animals um, thing like their their little pen 
inside. Yeah, see, that's already a, a, a cow pat or a pig pasture. Oh, no, see, it'll take it right... Did you see how it popped up there for one split second? Like that? Like, I could put sheep inside the pig pasture. <laughs> a little bit crazy, but it's an option. Or we could just cut into some of our grass field and we could turn some of this grass area into uh, an area for the sheep to be. Like, I'm not sure what the best option to do is, but I just know I would love to have more animals than just the pigs. I think it would be cool to uh, do as many different things on this series as I can that I've never done before. So, something to think about. This is definitely not our land over here. We cannot build over there. But it would just be really nice to uh, to get some sheep to go along with our pigs, but I don't really want to damage any of my fields if I don't have to, but I don't know of any other way we could do it. Like we could cut into this grass field and, and put the sheep right here. But I would prefer to do it like over in this area. The problem is, is that then that doesn't leave us a path to drive into our grass field. Like we would be cutting off our access into this grass field. So, hmm, things to think about. Things to think about. All right. Well, we'll 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 worry about that after. But um, I would definitely love to, at a minimum, put a shed up at some point for us to get more equipment in. And uh, I'm thinking that what is this? Is this like an actual shed? It is. Ooh, that's nice. Only ten grand. Be doing something like that on this little pad just be cool. So we'll, uh, we'll figure that out when the time comes, but, um, but things definitely to think about. So definitely leave me some comments on, on your thoughts about should we, should we expand and get some sheep? Should we not worry about sheep just yet and just focus on doing some of the other stuff that we need to do? Uh, you give me your thoughts, let me know what you think, and we'll kind of go from there. But for now, let's uh, jump back out here. And since we're done with that, I think, you know what, let's, uh, let's take those two silage bales and get them out of there. They're not doing any good right now. So let's take two silage bales, we'll get them out, and we'll pick them up with the tractor here. We'll get the uh, pallet forks back on. We'll just stab those guys, because I don't think we have a bale fork, do we? If we do, oh, we do. It's right over there. Let's see, if we do, it would be in the area where the bales are, and we certainly do, so let's, uh, let's get this front loader back attached. We'll get the bale fork, and we'll run those two silage bales. over to the cell point. Okay, let's drop off the pallet fork there. And grab our bale fork. Yeehaw. Now, two bales, we should be okay. We shouldn't need to worry about putting the weight on. So we'll just, uh, we'll give her a go and get both these guys picked up. Now we have to do it from this side so we don't push the bales back into the uh, point there where it's going to try and shove them into into the loft again. So let's do this. Make that bale fall off. See if we can stab that one as well. He sure did. 
Well, this is kind of the wrong way to be moving silage bales. Realistically, I should be grabbing them with a bale grabber as opposed to a spike. But since we're selling the silage, we're not too worried about keeping it, uh, keeping the wrap on. The bales are getting sold, so they're going to get chopped up and used for whatever they're getting used for. So I have no problem with spiking them, but yes, normally you would not want to spike your silage bales because you would perforate your wrap and ruin your silage bale. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's go for a drive. biogas plant. Drop these two bales in. They should be worth a little over a thousand dollars a piece. So a bit more money about. Um, one thing that I want to do and hopefully with my horrible memory do it. Um, while I was recording the other episodes I had a problem where uh, the tractor, as you can see, lower right hand corner, it, uh, it got damaged somehow, I don't know how, probably from being bounced off of a few corners of buildings and things like that. <laughs> um, I tried to repair it in my shop back at the farm and it wasn't allowing me to repair the tractor. It wasn't even showing the tractor in the uh, in the trigger zone. And it was definitely in the trigger zone. So we're just gonna stop at the store here really quick and we're gonna go into the repair shop there and see if we can't get the tractor repaired. All dependent upon cost, of course. Like, I don't really wanna spend $30,000 repairing this tractor um, and it seems to me that, that that always seems to be the case. I don't know where they got their uh, got their numbers from for doing repairs on equipment in this game, but good lord. Um, I'm not seeing a trigger here. Is the trigger actually... Oh, it's all the way out here. Yeah, you can... I can't... Weird. I'm gonna bring it down to this end and see if it will work here. But that's exactly what I was getting in my own repair shop. I'm guessing this is the actual trigger right here, inside this box. So let's see if it's gonna detect the... There we go. Okay. So repairing... Like, look at this repaint. $22,000. Are you kidding me? Uh, so we'll, we'll repair this guy. Our spike should be good. This 18 bucks, we'll repair it. Why not? Okay. Beautiful. So now we should have a nice brand new tractor. I love it. Let's get back to the old farm here 
and uh, we're going to take a look at what the weather's looking like and see if it's supposed to be snow in February or if it's supposed to warm up and that will determine if we're going to jump to February or if we're going to jump all the way up to March. I would prefer, I mean we're probably going to have to stop in February regardless because we have to see and make sure that our pig's food level is good and you know nothing's going out of, out of whack there and um, I know that the greenhouse is in good shape I spent a lot of time in the last video that I was recording that never actually made it um, we filled the water tank and we completely filled that greenhouse to the max because with the snow I wanted the water tanker to be inside out of the snow so I wanted to fill the greenhouse so I did it's got like 19,000 liters of water in it <laughs> so we're safe there um, but yeah we just got to keep our eyes on the pigs make sure like it shows that they've got a lot of food but we've got 50 pigs there now so they will tear through that food like crazy so I don't want to like sleep through too many uh, too many days so we'll probably end up jumping to February and stopping just to check and see what their food situation is like anyway. But um, if February is going to be warmer and there's not going to be snow in February, we may be able to stop in February and start doing some work on our own land. We need to fertilize and lime that, uh, that barley field. We need to fertilize uh, our grass one more time. And we need to figure out what crop we're going to put in field six. So we've got a lot of stuff that we've got to do, but it's all dependent on when this snow is going to go away. So let's, uh, let's pull over here. And we'll park right in here. And shut her down. Okay. Look at how nasty this thing looks. We definitely need to get ourselves a pressure washer. That's $5,000 and we'll have to spend that on another day. Uh, let's take a quick look at what the weather is supposed to look like for February. So February is still supposed to be fairly cold with snow falling in the second day of February. So what we'll do is we'll sleep through to February 1st. And we'll check on the pigs, we'll make sure that their food is good, and we'll just make sure things are looking good, nothing's going crazy around the farm, and then we'll probably sleep through to March 1st, and then we can start looking at contracts, as well as looking at um, our, our own fields and see, oh, I forgot to collect this contract that I did. I've got 6,000 bucks sitting there. <laughs> Let's collect that. Perfect. Um, one thing that we have to keep in mind, though, is when it's winter time, um, we cannot do cultivating. I did that contract in the winter time. It was uh, the first week of November, and it actually destroyed our cultivator um, because the ground is frozen and it destroys your implements, much like with when I said earlier in one of the videos when you try and plow when it's raining or if you're cultivating when it's raining you know it's just because the ground textures change it does damage to your equipment uh, in some instances depending on the condition of the ground so um, we definitely won't be doing any cultivating until the ground warms up okay so let's hop in the house. We're gonna go for a quick sleep. It's gonna be a double sleep actually, because we're gonna go all the way to February. And then we'll uh, we'll see what we've got going on. I'm pretty confident that the pigs will not run out of food during this little uh, transition to March, but I do wanna just check it out. We'll go one more, and then we'll go do a quick tour, we'll check on our bank balance, we'll see what we're at, because we will have made a loan payment, 
and we'll check on the pigs. And we'll just look and see what the weather looks like out there. Okay, so a loan payment. May see like snow is gone. Snow is gone. We could be like it's calling for snow, but I'm guaranteeing it's not gonna be snow that accumulates. It'll just be snow that falls and is annoying. But how are we doing for food? We got six thousand liters of food left. We've got lots of slurry. Nice. Come on, pigs. Keep crapping it out. Is this the manure? I'm guessing this is the manure and I have to scoop it out of here. I've got a manure fork here so I can do so. I've never, never done the manure thing with pigs, so... Um, yeah, it'll definitely be a, uh, a learning curve for that one too. So this, now that the snow's gone, let's just do this really quick so that we can, we can see and get an idea of how this would work. So if we go animals and we go sheep, and we get this little sheep enclosure here. So if we see, if we try and put this in here, it was working the one time, but now it's causing grief. Probably because I'm standing there. But you see how it would cover up the access to the grass field, right? We would have to go around. Whereas if we were to stick it over here, you have no conflicts with getting into and out of the grass field. It would just change the shape of our grass field. I would have to kind of go around this thing and change the boundaries of the field a little bit. It would add a add a new little bend in, in the field. But uh, I think that that would be an option that would be uh, would be doable. The other option we have is this new field that we've got. We could. We could cut a chunk out of this field and put our sheep in this field as an option. But I don't know. So think about it. Give me give me some input. Tell me what you think. Um, I guess this is another option would be to do something like this if we can end up making this fit when I'm out of the way. I happen to be standing right in the worst spot when I when I started this. So let's try this really quick and just see what it does. Uh, sheep. Yeah, it won't let it go there. About the only spot that it's going to fit in here. Right like that. Yeah, that's not that's not a good fit, I don't think. But anyways, um, so since the pigs are looking good and we've got no um, no snow on the ground again, I think that we should look at taking some fertilizer out onto that barley field at a minimum because we need to make sure that that barley field is getting what it needs to grow. We're gonna get some uh, get some fertilizer out there, and then we're gonna have to <sighs> wrong key. We're gonna have to uh, grab ourselves a lime spreader as well, and get a bag of lime or two, and get that also looked after on the field because we need this barley to, to get a good yield for us so that we can uh, make some good money off of it. We paid like $80,000 for this field. We're definitely not getting $80,000 worth of barley off of it, but we should do everything in our power to uh, get the uh, yield up as high as possible. So it says the ground is still frozen, but we should be able to drive on here without damaging the crop, fingers crossed, and get to fertilizing. Let's uh, just make sure we're not destroying the barley as we're driving on it. Nope, we are not. Thank you. And turn on the fertilizer. Let's go. Right. 
ran out of fertilizer while we were uh, getting this field done up, so I uh, took a little cut, we went over and we bought some new fertilizer, got it all loaded up into our spreader here, but at the same time, knowing that we were going to need to do lime as well, um, I just decided that... Uh, you know what, we're not going to be leasing some equipment for the lime, so we actually just went and bought a lime spreader. So we have a nice new lime spreader there, and it's all full of lime, ready to rock and roll. Now, it's definitely not going to be enough to uh, do this entire field. Why is that still going? God for precision farming. Um, yeah, as I was saying, the lime is definitely not going to be enough to do the entire field because the uh, pH balance on this field is so horrible. Um, but we've got a bunch more bags of lime back at the store that we can, uh, we can go and pick up when we need to. But uh, let's get out here and hopefully, like precision farming will also control the amount of lime that gets spread. So hopefully, we'll get a good uh, a good deal here and it won't use up the lime too fast. So let's uh, turn this on, get into a time lapse and uh, you're done. Alright folks, well, due to the fact that we ran out of lime so fast on this field, uh, just decided to jump cut it rather than time lapse it. Uh, we did bring all of our lime over to the field and we now have a field that is perfect value on pH, perfect value on nitrogen, and we're looking good. Um, while we're over here, I just thought, hey, why not? Let's go take a look and see if we've got some tomatoes over here. We should have a pallet or two. Or four. Or five. Good lord. Good lord. We got lots of tomatoes to look at picking up and selling. So that's something we can look at as well. Let's see what we've got for prices on tomatoes if they're still high. May end up doing another tomato run. Oh, damn, they are high. And this is that market that's really nice and close. So we might end up uh, bringing the pickup out here and getting them all loaded up and uh, and running them in. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I think, you know what? I think for right now, we've gotten quite a bit accomplished in this episode. We picked up a brand new piece of equipment. We've got a little uh, lime spreader to go with our fertilizer spreader. We've got our barley field all limed up and fertilized up and it should be good to go. I, we're going to need one more application of fertilizer but uh, or actually no because this is precision farming. We're good. We don't need to do that. So, um, so it looks like we're in good shape on this field. We just need to determine what crop we're going to throw in field 6 over here by the old uh, greenhouses. And I'm kind of leaning towards canola, just because it's such a good price. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll plan for canola to go in here. And we're going to have to come over here and do some fertilizing and some lime on this field as well. So we'll maybe do that in the next episode when we're getting ready to get our canola going and that will be our plan for the next episode so uh thank you for coming out and watching the video today i hope that you all enjoyed uh, i definitely enjoyed making it for you i'm loving playing the farm sim and uh definitely excited to see what more we can do on this series here 
Um, as I said earlier on, definitely look forward to a community post uh, announcing when I'm going to go do a live stream. It will probably be on Saturday, but we'll firm that up for sure uh, a little bit closer to the end of day tomorrow, and uh, which will be Friday. I'm recording this Thursday, just so there's no confusion. Um, but yeah, definitely watch for a post, and I hope that you guys can make it out to the live stream and, uh, and spend some time hanging out with me and having some fun. So uh, with all that being said, thank you so much for checking out the video, and I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I hope we'll see you out on the next one. Take care, everybody.